One of the most oft asked questions by our priesthood leaders is how do we actually improve reverence at church on the Sabbath day? Let's take that question. The root of reverence is love. It's love for our Heavenly Father, His Son, Jesus Christ, and His atonement. But it's also love for children and families. And as we gather these children and we take them to sacrament meeting, we need to have the vision of the future. Of course, we need to be tolerant of babies and the their lack of reverence, but children are capable of learning and understanding the purpose of the sacrament. And so reverence, I believe, begins in the home long before you enter those chapel doors. I, I think one area where we could make <clears throat> a lot of improvement is in uh, being very reverent during the prelude music and, and really listening to that and training our families that uh, that's a time to get ourselves spiritually ready for the sacrament that's uh, about to come. And, and some of the messages from the hymns that we're listening to in that prelude music can uh, become very significant to us. Elder Cook, does that suggest that people come early enough to, to do that? Th that suggests that they come early enough to do that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and may I add one thing? The meeting really begins with that prelude music, not with the opening prayer. It is a bit of a struggle to uh, help people distinguish, and I do this from my own experience, between arrival time and start time, that they're not the same time. <laughs> <laughs> to, to have reverence is difficult, or feel reverence, uh, feel the spirit when you're rushed or pressured or stressed. So the preparation at home that's been mentioned, the arrival time, the, the prelude, all of those things establish a setting in which the Spirit can come, and that is where reverence is born. I remember uh, President Packer saying to us once, all the general authorities in a training meeting, would you give me an hour of your time? And we all said, yes, yes, we'd be happy to give you an hour of our time. We thought he meant we would sit down with him for an hour and be instructed, but he said, you've given me the hour, now I own it, and I'll tell you what to do with it. <laughs> You'll take the first seven minutes uh, before any meeting starts, sacrament meeting or general co or um, state conference, and sit and listen to the prelude music. You won't pass notes. You won't talk to anybody. You'll just let the Spirit teach you what you need to teach in the meetings and what you need to know. So that stayed with me, obviously, and I, th I, uh, I try to still give those seven minutes. I'm way past 60, but I'm still trying to give the <laughs> seven minutes before the meeting starts to the Lord. I'm thinking of a family that, uh, well, a, a tearful primary president who once approached me and said, and she had six children of her own, and she was in tears because she had been told by her uh, priesthood leader that she was responsible for the noisy little boy that ran around the church because his mother had stopped coming to church. She was a recent convert because someone had said something unkind about her noisy little boy. So this primary president now found herself with six children to deal with and this noisy little boy. And I suggested that maybe it might be, this might be a good board council item, that maybe if they could all share in the solution of this. So I guess my point is, not all people in the church are in an environment where they're teaching reverence at home. And so we all need to take ownership of those that maybe not have that training in their home and take, take hold of that. I'd like to just add to that that the Ward Council is a wonderful place for, um, for all voices to be heard, including the women who can have some great insights as to the families who might need extra help in sacrament meeting dealing with young children. Um, we have a lot of women who, uh, whose husbands maybe are sitting on the stand who have large families. We have single parents. Um, and Ward Council would be a great place to discuss how can we help these families have a better Sabbath experience while they're at church. My little boy mind remembers, uh, my father was not a member of the church, my mother was a stalwart. But I remember in a primary class one day being kind of marched into the chapel and the bishop was there. And I will never forget the bishop telling us about this dedicated place, this sanctuary, and that we needed to be on our best behavior when we were in the chapel. Now, that doesn't have to be the bishop. The best of all worlds is that might be a mom and a dad 
or a single parent or an auxiliary leader, but I've just never forgotten the impact that had on me about recognizing the sacred place of the chapel. I think music has a tremendous uh, impact on this issue of uh, developing the spirit uh, of reverence. Sometimes I think our organists uh, uh, might get a little bit beyond just quietly setting the stage for our worshiping the, uh, uh, at the feet of the Savior, really, when we partake of the sacrament. So I think music properly presented wherever possible, I think is a tremendous power in touching uh, the spirit of reverence in the hearts of the people. I remember um, hearing a, an opening prayer in a sacrament meeting one time, and the brother that gave it said, we come giving glances of hope to each other. And uh, if anything, we need the hope that what we do in that chapel and partaking of that ordinance gives us hope for the future. I think there's one other thing. I think leaders need to lead. So the bishopric or the branch presidency, I think they have an awful lot to do as to setting the spirit of reverence in a sacrament meeting by uh, themselves enjoying the music for a few minutes and by establishing the, uh, the spirit of, of love for the Lord and for our Heavenly Father that is, we're trying to get uh, the center piece in all of our lives, they can have a, a tremendous impact on that, even uh, sometimes by the few words they would say about the privilege of being together in sacrament meeting as they start that meeting. Reverence, I think, will improve. I would hope that we also could uh, have the saints come to fill uh, the electronic devices and some of that uh, that is uh, disturbing to people around could be uh, reduced uh, so that uh, that part of, of, of reverence would be there. We've, we have speakers not asking people to turn to the scriptures, so there's no reason, even if you're going to the scriptures on your device, uh, to necessarily do that during sacrament meeting. Other meetings, perhaps, yes. But uh, there could be a, cons a, a concerted effort to, uh, to reduce that and uh, maybe eliminate it uh, so that uh, that could increase the reverence. We were wondering if we could create an app. <laughs> <laughs> That's like when you have airplane mode for devices, you could have church mode. <laughs> But in the absence of that, we've got to have self-discipline. And I think you're absolutely right. There, there's no need for it in the sacrament meeting and appropriate use otherwise. The sacredness of what we do. I hope we just don't say words like sacred and reverent and they become trite. We prepare ourselves to come to the sacrament table. This is a holy ordinance. In the ordinances of the priesthood, the power of godliness is made manifest. On a weekly basis, as we properly prepare, the ordinance provides access to the power of godliness in our life for the coming week. If we really have that in our head and in our heart, I think that fosters reverence. <laughs>